I am the woman behind everything at Simply Josephine. And this is my maker's vlog or podcast. It is episode 13. I am super excited about today's episode because it's been a while since I've done an episode um, vlog. So I'm excited about that. And um, it's glorious fall time in our little corner of Montana, and I have been collecting all kinds of things. So I have a fall craft to share with you today. I saw a, well, I've been into TikTok a little bit lately, and there was a TikTok that I came across. Let's see, I wrote her name down so I could give a little shout out. Finch and Folly is um, her handle on, on TikTok. Anyway, I saw this video of her dipping fall leaves in beeswax and it is a glorious idea and that's what I've been working on today. So that's what I'm going to go over there. And then another part of the episode is my stepmom is going to come for Christmas. So I want to try to get our beverages in order. And I am going to make a wild rose hip and garden chamomile oxymel. So we're going to start the episode off with the fall craft garland leaf grab apple -y thing and then finish up with some oxymel making. So I guess I'll just get ready and dive right in. We've been having beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fall weather and I've been just really getting out in it and foraging the last little bits of things that need to be foraged for my business and and personal too uh, like i feel a person could not pick enough wild rose hips it's just not possible because they can pretty much go into any anything syrups and oxymels and elixirs and all kinds of things like that not even to mention tea or oil the list goes on and on so I've been doing a lot of the wild rose hip foraging and beautiful, beautiful weather. So anyway, to start off with this craft, in case you haven't noticed, I am really into stringing things up. <laughs> I have always been into stringing things up. In fact, when I first moved to Montana, which was in the fall of 97, the family that I stayed with were family members of a friend I had grown up with in Alaska, and they all played music. So there was just basically this group of hippies playing music, and one of the ladies named, one of the ladies was named Alien, and her house was kind of like, she was kind of like a little fairy, you, you know, and her house was very very cool. It was patched together, you know, her, her bed had quilts, but she had strung all of these rosebuds together with a needle and thread. And I, I just, I thought that was so beautiful. So then every spring I would like to string these rosebuds on. And, and I think I even string them in my wild rose medicine video. That's, I don't know. I did that a couple years ago. It'd be a few videos back. Anyway, I love doing that. I've, I've used them in displays or it's a great um, craft to do with kids in that age group. You know, like the age group where they want to be and involved in everything you're doing. Like 7 to 10 in there. It's a perfect age group for stringing rosebuds. And so on and on and on. Also, even going back to their growing up, I would hang out with this woman named Debbie. 
and she would also string up all kinds of things around her house. I remember her stringing it apple seeds, and they were and they were like beads hanging all over in her house. Anyway, so that's my inspiration for stringing everything up, and I love to string things. So I usually string these, um, I don't know if you can see them right above the mole in there, is rowan berries. And I usually pick rowan berries and string them up and put them all over in the house. And this year, I don't know, we had, oh, there's a cat. <laughs> there's a cat in a bed behind you, so I'm going to he knocks my camera over. Okay, I'm back. So, anyway, oh, I was talking about rowan berries, which is also mountain ash. Rowan berries are mountain ash berries. And I like to string them up and hang them around the house because it's very fall festive. And there's a lot of folklore around um, them, you know, protecting your home, protecting your home. Stringing up your berries with intention is like prayer, you know, putting, putting your intention into what you're stringing up and then hanging around the house. So I really like that concept. But this year, I think due to the fact that we had a massive drought, uh, super, super dry. There just, there weren't very many rowan berries, so I just decided to leave what was there for the animals because they will need them. And Eureka, the town that I live in, has a couple of these little sort of ornamental crabapple trees in town. And so here they are. I'll show you them. They're very tiny. They look like little hawthorn berries. And so I went around and picked some of these. And I've strung these up before in years past, a few years ago, maybe like 2017 or 2018. I remember doing a blog post all about it. But anyway, I am going to string these up with the wax leaves that I saw dipped. So I went, collected the crab apples. You could do crab apples, rowan berries, uh, rose hips, anything that you had a lot of access to. And then on my walk, I just went around and picked up beautiful leaves that I, I thought were pretty. And ooh, I love these, these quaking aspen leaves. Those are really nice. Anyway, the wax dipping really kind of seals the deal with the color, you know. It really locks in the color. And then it makes them, you know, it preserves them. You could dip a bunch of these leaves in wax, and then they could make a nice display on your fall table or your altar, or whatever you were inclined to do. But they're really, they're really nice, and then they become a little more durable, and you could clean them. And then you could also save them for, whoops, the next year. So that's what I'm doing with those. Wax dipping the leaves, and then stringing them up with have apples, I'm making whoop, garlands. So, see that? Isn't that beautiful? I love it. I love it, love it. So this, I'm going to hang these in front of the windows, and I like to hang them around the kitchen. And let's see, this one. And I just love the wax 
the waxy feel, it really preserves them. So I might do some that are more just the leaves. And if they get kind of hanging a little funky, you can kind of pull down on them. But this is what we're going to make today. So let's see here. I, I got just a sheet of wax paper and I laid that down to put my leaves on. Let's see, I'll make a little room here to show you how I'm dipping the leaves. And I use a double boiler. If you do not have a double boiler, you can make one pretty easily or you would have to put it on a pretty low setting on, on the stove so that your wax doesn't burn or smoke. I would, if you're into any sort of crafts or herbal medicine, I would highly recommend improvising and making your own double boiler or just purchasing. Here's mine. I have melted my beeswax. The beeswax that I use is just your regular, I like to buy them in the one ounce cupcakes is what they're called or one ounce bars. I, I like to purchase them this way. You can buy bigger blocks of wax or those little wax, they look like beads. So however you want to use your and purchase your beeswax. I put three ounces in here and that is plenty of wax. I probably should have only done two. But anyway, it's really simple. My wax is melted. I dip the leaf just like that and place on the wax paper. The colors, they really seal and a little more vibrant with the with the wax dipping. This these are really nice these these ones. See? So super simple, super easy, just a little dip and move on. <laughs> for some reason, I don't know what it is about them. I'm really into them this fall. But there's plenty to choose from. And then give them a good shake. Put them on there. And like I said, these would be beautiful in a display as well on your... This is a hawthorn. The hawthorn, which we have here, are black hawthorn. They are just fiery red right now. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous hawthorn. Let's get those dipped up. And I think this is where we'll stop for now. And I will. Ooh, I like these, but they got a little crinkled up. Let's see if I can loosen them up in the wax. I have so much, but let's see if these are dry. These are pretty. I got these at the park where I also got the crab apples. Working on my display, getting all festive. Okay, so I'm just going to set this off to the side. That is on low. I'll move that a little bit. And so for the stringing up, like I said, you could do just leaves or whatever you wanted to use, but I like to use a thicker 
fine because the crab apples are a little heavy for garland. So just regular thread, it will break. This is like a button cord. See, it's a little bit thicker. It's ancient. <laughs> it's a wooden stool even. But yeah, this is button, button cord. And then, so then you'll have to use a little bit bigger of a needle. I will say, be careful though, because these crab apples are kind of hard. You know, rowan berries are soft inside and don't have any thick seeds. So you can just go right through the rowan berries really quickly. And that's what I would use if I had a access to a lot of them. But, um, so be careful because I've poked myself a few times, but you know, I don't own a thimble. So, <laughs> this is the same thing in my Mullen video. I was like, oh, why didn't I thread this up ahead of time? Because now here I am fumbling. Fumbling. Here we go. Come on, my thing. There we go. Okay. Perfect. So, the end, I like to tie a little loop or something so I can hang it around the house or in the window. I don't know. I think I'm going to try more. I like the space of these, but I think I might do maybe four crab apples. Eh, maybe I'll stick with five. We'll see. But then you can tie these garlands together as well. And for hanging them up in front of windows and that type of thing. So just grab your Grab your crab apple. You can go through. I kind of go off to the side just a little bit because if you go right through the middle, with these crab apples anyway, who knows what the crab apples you've got at your place going on are like. But there's so many seeds in here, I can't get right through the middle. So I just kind of go off to the side. Stringing them up here. These, I also made a broth or a chicken stock this morning and I put some of those crab apples in there. I've also put crab apples in other things. Um, this is a blueberry crab apple oxymel. Keep that going. It's been infusing for a few weeks. Might have to strain that, strain that up. Or that's actually a shrub the fruit in it. But so it's endless what you can do with these crab apples. And then leaving them too for the birds is a nice gesture. Okay, four, attaching the leaves. So the leaves are pretty simple here. I just put the leaf stem kind of on top of the thread. I am not a knot expert, and you may have a better way of doing this. There's some things we're good at, and there's some things we are not. I am not a very good knot tire, even despite years of working on commercial fishing boats. So I make a loop, run, run the thread through the loop. See, I'm already getting And then pull tight. And that seems to be working for me. So whatever, whatever you want to do though, feel free to do. I'm sure you might have a better, a better way of knotting these. But this is pretty much it. It's pretty nice. You can just think about fall. I'm just, I'm so grateful for fall. I love having
having all of winter to look forward to. I love just the clear, crisp mornings. And I also love having just winter, winter's coming, the cozy, the cozy fall. And I also feel super inspired. Color really inspires me. So I like fall, obviously, for all the color and green gets me going. So now I am, oh, that one's kind of twisted up. So if you do end up with a leaf that's a little bit twisted, I just hold down on it a little bit, making it so that it hangs a little farther down the stem. But we'll get ready to attach another one. Oh my goodness, these freaking aspen leaves. Gorgeous. Whew, sneeze went away. So, attaching the leaf loop it around once, go through the middle, pull up, go through again, pull tight. And you can move the leaf down the cord to be closer to the crab apples, if you want. Some people like things to be really even and some people don't care about that so much. So that's about, this is about the craft, folks. So much fall craft to do, decorating. I love to decorate the house with natural things. It just is so much more comforting to me than like store-bought or something like that. Fall nature crafts. Well, I think I've showed you about everything that I need to do. So I am going to shut this down, finish up my project here. I'll show you how it's going. And then um, clean up my area and We'll bust out that, oh, that's fine, and we'll bust out that oxymel. So, I'll be back in a few. All right, I'm back and I'm ready to make the oxymel. I have never put chamomile in a oxymel before, so this will be a new, a new thing for me. And um, I typically probably would have used honey today but um or in this recipe with the rose hips however i am out of honey so i'm going to make it with maple syrup apple cider vinegar rose hips and the chamomile and let's see i'll pull this out so this is a shrub and it's very similar to an oxymel only has fruit and then the shrub, I like to chop up the fruit, put a little sugar on it, and a breathable top with a rubber band, and just leave that out on the counter for a couple of days. And then I add all the other stuff, the herbs, the honey, the apple cider vinegar, or whatever you want to put in it. But since we are just doing an oxymel today, we will do a piece of wax <laughs> from the project. Oh, speaking of the project, so these I didn't put any um, crab apples on, and these look nice too. Don't they look good? I've, I've wanted to hang something here because this is kind of boring, so I think it looks good. All right, so the first part will be I know, I know. I buzz everything up in this food processor, and it's loud and annoying, but it works really good. Especially
especially for the rose hips. Hopefully, oh good. Everything's clean. So I always forget to get everything ready for you ahead of time. So I have been picking tons of rose hips and I have been drying them on screens and I, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use some that are kind of fresh because um, I picked these yesterday. So that's what I'm going to start off with. Some of the fresh and some that are a little on the dry side. After, if you wait till after the frost to pick your rose hips, they are sweeter, much sweeter than if you don't. And if you end up picking your rose hips before, before the frost, you can always pop them in the freezer too. But anyway, I am eyeballing this today since I'm making this for uh, Christmas beverages for my, my stepmom when she comes. So I think I'm going to start with that amount. And let me get these other ones that are... There we go. Get them all on the same. more depending on how this goes. Oh, I've got a few stems you can pull off and you can also pull off what was the petals. I didn't get around to that yet and I am not making this for purchase so I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to blend up what little chunks of petal and some stem I'm not I'm not too concerned. So this rosehip oxymel mixed with fresh lime and sparkling water and a little shot of wild chamomile elixir or lemon balm elixir. Oh my goodness, so good. And these are both super chill herbs. So they're really nice to take in the evening. You can mix your mocktail, put a dropper full or two of either one of these in. It just sort of sets the stage for the evening, moving down into chill space. And I really, I really like that. So I use both of those frequently. But this will be annoying. <laughs> won't take that. Okay. Buzzed up good enough. So I do have people ask me about the seeds from time to time. And when, oh my gosh. Oh, that smell. So good. Woo. So anyway, back to the seeds. People do ask me from time to time about the seeds. And I strain this through cheesecloth and a strainer. So using the cheesecloth and a strainer gets the seeds out. So, so that's, that's how I do it. I mix up the seeds and everything for the infusion part. And I also blend these up for oil making. In fact, with most of those other ones, I'm going to make a gallon of olive oil for the wild rose hip soap bars. Those are really nice. And I also infuse avocado oil for body oil and for making other little balms and things. Lip balm body oil, different things like that. So, as we can see, uh, that's not a whole lot of rose hips. I think I'll buzz up a few more. 
I need to get out and harvest some more rose hips before before it's over. It's getting close. It's getting close. I see our weather is going to change next week and get really wet and cold. And then after that, the rose hips they get kind of mushy and they aren't worth drying. Okay, that ought to be good enough. So these are a little more dried, not so fresh, but that's fine. You can make oxymels out of dried berries if you want. Dried or fresh, and this is a mixture of both. Uh-oh, here comes the cats to complain. <laughs> okay, so... I can't get over how that smells. But as you can see here, okay. Come on. All right. So, as you can see, that's nice there. And I want to talk a little bit about growing your own herbs. So this is the homemade, homemade, <laughs> homegrown chamomile flowers. And the smell is, oh my gosh, it's so like floral, sweet, very, very nice. And then this is chamomile flowers that I have purchased. So this is not nearly, not nearly aromatic, and doesn't even look remotely as good. I mean, look at them compared to each other there. It, um, it really makes all the difference in the world in these remedies that you're making if you're growing your own herbs or wild crafting your own herbs. So if you have that privilege, if you have that capacity or that available to, to you, there's no comparison than buying it. I mean, this is still would make a decent oxymel, but it's gonna be nothing like this. So, and the vitamins and the mineral, there's just so much more in these than, than this. This has been, you know, processed and sat around for a while. Like I said, I can hardly even tell that it smells. But if this is all that's available to you, by all means, use it. So I am going to use my homegrown because, oh my goodness. Oh, and this, if you even don't have access to a garden and you have a little patio, this could be grown in a pot quite easily. And it's like calendula. You just go around and deadhead the tops and dry them. You have to collect them regularly, but you pull all the tops off like every other day and have them on the dry rack. And, you know, pretty soon you have a whole bunch. And the more you collect, the more you, the more you get. And I was also gone for two and a half weeks, almost three weeks during a drought in the summer, had somebody watering my garden for me, and um, they, these weren't getting picked. But once I got home and got on top of it, it got, it was pretty amazing. Anyway, back to eyeball, eyeball botanicals. So I have never put chamomile in a oxymel before, so I'm probably not gonna go too gung-ho. Just a nice, a nice layer is all I'm going for there. But I bet it'll be good. I want to, I make a wild chamomile collection, and now that's pineapple weed, and this is regular chamomile. Um, but in my collection, I want to make an oxymel and add that to the collection. I think that'll be nice. Mm, this looks so pretty with the red and the beautiful little flowers. I 
think it looks so nice. Mm, it smells so good too. All right. Moving on to getting this thing made up. Now, this is super simple, requires very little, very little ingredients. And again, I'm eyeballing it. Um, if you were going to make these to purchase, you might want to weigh your stuff out so that your recipe can be accurate. But I'm not worrying about that today. Because like I said, this is for personal use. And I'm eyeballing it, obviously, like I said. But I'm going to go for one part maple syrup, four parts apple cider vinegar. So you can always add more syrup. You can taste it, you know, one week or two weeks in, and you can always add more syrup to it. But you don't want things to be too sweet. And for some reason, maple syrup to me seems really sweet. So I'm stopping there with that. And then this uh, I purchased from Azure, Azure Standard. So it's just your regular apple cider vinegar, raw, raw organic apple cider vinegar. And then I'm just going to fill that up. And put a wax paper down. Anything with the vinegars, you want to use a wax paper to make sure um, the vinegar doesn't eat the lid. So get that on there. And give it a good shake. I'm going to label this. And let it infuse for about a month at least a month let's see it is like October 20 something today yeah and she comes December 12th or somewhere in there so the first part of December I will strain and bottle this so it'll be ready ready to mix with lime and lemon balm elixir and sparkling water and there it is isn't it pretty if you've never had rosehip oxymel or rosehip um, infused vinegar it is amazing so so delicious so I'll get that labeled and clean this up and I think that probably does it for this episode. I'm so glad you could join me. And please, if you have any questions, um, feel free to leave a comment and subscribe and all of that. You can find me and all of my offerings over at simplyjosephine.com. And get out there and enjoy fall because winter will be here in just in just a blink thanks for joining me bye